friends, it's time for some happy painting again. You answered my poll and it was strawberries. So we are painting strawberries today, friends. On this channel, we're obsessed with watercolor. And I was put on this earth to teach you how to make art for joy's sake. Do you wanna paint with me? Well, come on, let's go. Hey friends, I wanna talk about the one of the techniques that I'm gonna be using the most today, and that is flooding. All right, let's get into it. So lay down some color, and then immediately rinse your brush, but bring back a loaded brush full of clean water and start pushing that color around. You can even do it with another color, like the yellow I did just there, and start pushing that first color around. So basically you're flooding an existing color with either clean water or another color. It allows you to push things around to kind of create shape and dimension right on the page. It also is a great way to mix color right on the page. So again, friends, this is flooding. It's a kind of very close cousin of wet on wet, but it involves more movement and more, more, it involves more work on your part because you're not just dabbing and dropping color into a wet area. You're actually pushing color around with your brush and with a lot of water or a lot of pigment. And that's the thing, friends, a good flooding situation is not just a little bit of water. It's a good amount of water. All right, friends, let's get to it. I'm using Academy watercolor paper today. I have to say, friends, this is becoming a new favorite of mine. Love it so much. Really great quality, super affordable. Also using my favorite handmade watercolors case for making. Check out all the links below if you wanna get your own. And of course, I can't help myself. I'm using the Art for Joy Sake brush collection, which is coming soon. And let's start with my uh, quickly becoming my new favorite, the half inch dagger. Oh my heavens. Okay. A strawberry is basically kind of um, a fat teardrop, I guess, like a reverse teardrop with not so sharp of a point, if that makes sense. Starting with a pink, quickly going into kind of a, a brighter, deeper pink, like a terracotta. You use what you have, just two different pinks. It could even be like a pink and a little red. It could be a red. If you don't have a pink, it could be a red mixed with a whole bunch of water. Use what you have. Don't stress out about what I'm using. Uh, this is another like pinky terracotta color and I'm varying the shapes of my strawberries and I'm really, really leaning into my brush and what it can do for me. That's the thing about dagger brushes, friends. They have a very distinctive shape. They hold a good amount of water. They have a point, they have a curved edge, they have a flat edge. And you can literally just lay them down on their side, right on the paper in ways, and just fill up space, cover area with that simple act. You don't have to draw with your brush when it's a dagger. A round brush is a different story. It's kind of thin. It's it's It doesn't cover a lot of area and a lot of time, but a dagger brush is very different. Gosh, I hope that made sense, friends. If you're loving these colors so far and you're loving the way that this video is going, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. I'm adding in some fluorescence already. You might notice that I'm kind of pushing color around. You'll see me kind of lightly pushing color. You'll see me go off screen sometimes. And that means I'm rinsing my brush, bringing back some water and dabbing it into the middle. See right there, I just literally took a damp, clean brush and I'm pulling off some color that's called lifting. And so these are simple ways to manipulate color and push the color around, create highlights. Let's do some leaves, friends. Just a simple wiggle, mostly with the tip of my brush and a little bit of pressure. There's the outline, pick up a little bit of water, add a different green and let it flow into the first green. Same thing, rinse, 
pick up a third green. That's right, friends, and this one's fluorescent, but don't panic, it won't stay super fluorescent unless you want it to. Gorgeous. Filled it in, and here's the thing. I want you to realize what I'm doing because I'm doing it on purpose. I am letting that green bump into the pink. Yes, and you're probably like, wait, why? Because the magic of watercolor is are those little explosions, right? So if you don't allow them to happen, I kind of feel like you're missing out on a little bit of the magic. It can feel very like disconcerting when you're doing it. And see, I just did it there again. I created this big strawberry with kind of a tan milky color, but I let it boop into the pink strawberry above it ever so slightly. And that pink from the strawberry above is seeping down into the big beige strawberry. And of course, now I'm adding some darker pink, almost like a wine color, a little bit of yellow. And with clean water, see off screen again, I'm pushing all that color around. That's why I don't mix on a palette too often because I can do all that pushing and smudging and mixing right on the page and let all of that color dancing happen right on the page. It's so fun. Going back to that leaf, it's still wet and adding some really intense, like an indigo, a little bit of blue. Gorgeous. And yes, I'm letting things touch. That is the name of the game with this particular painting. Is this a style I use all the time? No, but this style is purposely driven by the wowness that happens when you let one brush stroke bump up to another. Brush strokes that you wouldn't think you'd want to bump, that you wouldn't want to encourage bleeding between two colors. I mean, in your head, you're like, wait, I don't want my green to bleed into my pink strawberry. Won't that dull down my pink strawberry? If it's a controlled bleed, a controlled explosion, meaning do it when your strawberry is damp, not soaking wet, and it will only bleed a little bit and create this little pocket of wonderfulness that is, it's just hard to describe. All right, now into the leaves, friend, another leaf. And this is just kind of like what I would call a wiggle leaf. You kind of create a, a curvy, wiggly line. You mirror another curvy, wiggly line on the other side, and you just fill in in between. My trick is just to fill in with a couple different greens. Don't keep it all the same green. Now listen, friends, I know I, I got a little pushback on my last video and I knew I would, you know, the video where I talk about mixing on the page, not mixing on the palette. And a lot of there's, I don't want to say a lot of you, but some of you, enough of you for me to want to address it, felt very stressed out by having a quote, dirty palette, not, not cleaning your palette um, and mixing on the page and double dipping into your colors. Listen, friends, no judgment here. I am here to make sure that you're painting in a way that is comfortable and safe and joyful for you. Part of that involves me telling you or sharing with you ways that I do that. Because the ways that I do that sometimes are kind of different from what other people do. So I just want you to know there are options, but there is absolutely no judgment on my part for how you choose to get color on the page. The point is my friends, is that you get the color on the page, that you do the painting, because the painting will lead to the joy and we all need that joy. So I just wanted to say that, and let's get back to the leaf. Look at that, friends. I even added a little bit of pink, let some of the pink from that upper strawberry flow right down into it. And oh, in my humble opinion, it is magic time. I love it. This is a great time for you to step back you don't have to stand up and actually step back, but just take a moment, take a beat, take a breath and just see what you've done. This is the time to pat yourself on the back. You know, you know the drill, be kind to yourself. Now, I love to paint baby strawberries. I always work out baby strawberries into my composition, little yellow strawberries with a tinge of green and a tinge of a tinge of pink. They sometimes can almost look peach. Baby strawberries are just a breeding ground for beautiful color combinations. So highly recommend putting some of those in there. They're just teenier and they usually come to a little bit more of a point, generally speaking. 
All right, friends, I am now going to the Remember Joy brush. It's a liner brush. I wanna get some stems in here. Really, really light hand. These stems are a little longer than, well, I mean, strawberry stems can be kind of long, but do what feels right to you. Start with a shorter stem. If you feel like then you want it to be longer, you can always elongate and add to it. While I'm at it, I don't care that the, the leaf is a little damp. I'm gonna go ahead and put some linear details in those damp leaves, see what happens. They might just fade away, then no harm, no fail, uh, but they might create a really cool effect. All right, let's keep on moving here. I am using the quarter inch dagger. Friends, If obviously you don't have my brush set yet. If you're watching this near the time it was recorded, no one has this brush set yet. You can just use a dagger. You can use a round brush. I'd recommend more about a size four. Um, use what you have. It's all good. Just creating some more leaves. Strawberry leaves, when I think of them, they're almost like um, almost like a silver dollar eucalyptus with ruffly edges. So kind of like a round leaf that comes to a slight point with ruffly wavy edges. Now, I've elongated some of those because I just want to, but uh, that is where my head's at with strawberry leaves. Take a look at Google images if you want to, if that helps you. I did not look at a reference image whatsoever. Whew, how we feeling friends? How we feeling? If you're loving this and you don't wanna miss out on any future uploads, this is the time to subscribe. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up. There's a guy on YouTube that I love and he calls it, give this video a boop. And I might just have to steal, I might have to steal that from him. I love it. So give this video a boop, friends. I would be so appreciative. All right, time for a big old strawberry up here. Here's something else to think about when you're creating your strawberry composition. I want you to think about, well, first of all, don't stress about composition, but here's a little tip vary the size of your strawberries. Also slightly vary the angle at which the strawberries are kind of standing or sitting, whatever you want to call it, on the page. So you don't want all your strawberries, for example, perfectly straight up and down because they wouldn't really occur that way in nature. And you don't want all your strawberries to be exactly the same size or even close to the same size. So um, I kind of try to vary the shape, the size and the angle. Um, now these strawberries that I'm painting in right now are still pretty damp, but I am going in and adding some of the quintessential little strawberry seeds. I'm using like a, a, a deep burgundy, a dark red, an alizarin crimson, if you will, a scarlet red. Use what you have, it's basically just a dark red. So how's it going, how's it feeling? Are you getting stressed? Don't. These are strawberries, they're just fun. Let that paint mingle. Let those colors bleed into one another and see what amazing happy accidents happen. Don't stress out. Breathe and keep painting. Now friends, I wanna zoom in here so you can get a closer look at what this painting is looking like down close. We're gonna keep painting here. I hope you enjoy this angle. I'm starting with just a soft pink, a little bit of green was on my brush, so it's making a little bit of like a dusty pink and creating the shape. Boom, right into the green. See how that green is seeping into my pink a little bit and I'm A-OK -okay with it. Now I'm going in with the tip of my quarter inch dagger and a dark red. Look at that, look at that. Everything's damp, everything's wet, it's OK. Adding a little bit of fluorescent with the curved edge, that's the, the kind of wider edge of the brush for nice coverage. And then water on my brush and I'm pushing around that color to kind of blend everything. I'm not blending it perfectly. I still want there to be moments that are distinctly pink, distinctly fluorescent pink and distinctly dark red. Now I'm gonna leave that be and I'm gonna see what happens to it. I'm gonna see how it changes. I'm not gonna continue to paint on that pink strawberry for now, adding a little bit of a yellow base of a strawberry. Notice a little bit smaller and a little bit of that pink was on my brush when I grabbed the yellow. So now I'm kind of getting a peach. I'm adding in a little bit of green. Presumably this is a less ripe strawberry a little bit dark on the yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift some of that up with a clean 
pretty much dry brush, push it up, 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 and I'm also creating highlights. So by pushing this color away and scooping some of it up, you're softening the impact of the color you put down. You're also creating highlights. And not to mention some of that pink from the strawberry on the right is now coming over even more into my quote yellow strawberry. And you know, I like that so much. I'm gonna add a little bit more pink. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is a technique that I call contrast detailing, friends, where you take a really dark color and you don't outline necessarily, but right on the edge of a shape, you add some deep contrasting color with a little brush stroke. It's definitely not an outline because you don't kind of create that, continue that stroke all the way around the shape. You just do it in spots and it adds like, wow, boom, contrast, shadow, and depth but it does it in a way that isn't terribly like in your face realistic. It's still very expressive and kind of that modern watercolor vibe, just lovely. All right, friends, continuing on close up in another section here, I'm gonna paint in some baby, baby strawberries. Uh, this one is definitely, I think gonna be a cluster. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly get those shapes in. These are all gonna be on the tinier side, more similar in size than what I recommended earlier in terms of composition, but that's okay. Um, these become kind of like a filler in ways. So different yellows, different greens. I'm using the quarter inch dagger and I'm using the tip of the quarter inch dagger. I think about cascading in my paintings a lot because a cascading element, whether it's a vine, whether it's a cluster of baby strawberries, whatever it is, when something cascades, meaning it kind of trails along in the space, going from a little bit larger to a little bit smaller, it's just a beautiful effect. It gives so much power to your composition and it's a great way to fill up a space in an interesting way that doesn't feel repetitive. So think about cascading and how you can bring the idea of cascading into your compositions. And again, basically it's a cluster of something, a leaf, a berry, a, a fruit element that goes, they're all clustered closely together and it goes from a little bit larger to a little bit smaller. And as you can see here, I went from a cluster of three down to a cluster of two. Maybe I'll add a single later on and it'll have this beautiful kind of waterfall effect. Lovely. I'm adding in some very, very thin lines here for the vines. I used my liner brush and now I'm using my number two brush for some very simple little leafy moments. All right, we're still going here, adding more leaves. I'm using the quarter inch dagger, dab, dab, bounce. Three different greens, love that. Now you might be wondering at this stage, you might be like, Christy, where, where are you gonna add the highlights? You didn't save your whites. What are you gonna do with these strawberry seeds? Trust me, friends, it's coming, it's coming, I promise. I'm thinking about my composition, but I'm not agonizing over my composition. I didn't sketch ahead of time. Oh, did you see that pink, friends? Did you see that pink? I probably gave some of you a little bit of a heart palpitation. I apologize in advance. But look, it already is blended in, and it's just a really interesting, colorful shadow. It doesn't scream pink anymore. Please try it. If you haven't incorporated fluorescence into your palette yet, I highly encourage you to do just that. At this point in the painting too, you wanna look at, see what is still damp, what is dry, things that you might want to soften with a little bit of water. If there's anything in your painting that you feel like is drying in a weird way, harsh angles, just take a little bit of clean water and go right over top and softly blend a little bit. Now, I'm going back into this big, beautiful strawberry on top and I'm glazing over with a fluorescent and now over top, now that it's wet again, I'm going over top with a really intense indigo purpley color. And boom, instant shadow, drama, drama, drama. 
I want to say this, friends. We are not going to necessarily, quote, finish this painting together. This painting could be done for some of you right now. Maybe you want to add a little bit of white into the seeds, which I am going to do soon. But this painting could be very well feeling very satisfying to you right now. Very successful. I'm feeling good about mine. You could stop right here. You, however, could continue going and layering and layering. See those little touches of white I'm adding in? Yep, white watercolor, friends. It's good to have around. You can keep layering and adding more of the contrast detailing we discussed earlier. You can add more linear details. So just know that there's no finish line for this painting. And there's no finish line for your painting. There doesn't have to be. I'm gonna just keep painting while it feels good. All right, friends, I'm getting that liner brush back out and getting into those leaves now that they're dry. This is the real satisfying part with the liner brush. Oh yeah, look at those veins. Light hand, follow the curve. You don't have to create solid lines down the entire edge of the leaf. You could kind of create like little dotted lines, dashy lines. Oh yeah, look at that. Change the color of the paint on your brush if you want. I did not, but you certainly could. Gorgeous. Keep it going. Bounce around, decide. Like those two leaves up there, I just decided in the moment they're gonna become two leaves. I wasn't sure what they were gonna be when I first painted them. You don't always have to have a plan, friends. You don't always have to have a plan. Watercolor begs you to go with the flow. Did you see what I did just there, friends? I didn't create continuous lines on that leaf with my liner brush. So think about that. The linear details that you add with that liner brush don't always need to look the same. I'm going to that big strawberry with my liner brush. It's still damp and I'm at adding even more of that dark, dark color. And it blended down into my leaf just below. I got a little bit of clean water on that liner. Didn't even feel the need to change that brush out and I'm smoothing that that blend of color from the strawberry to the leaf with my liner. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of a pink and using that for some leafy details, cause why not? Remember friends, if you lay down linear details and they feel kind of wah wah, you can always take a brush with clean water and blend right over them. I'm probably gonna end up doing that here cause I'm not quite feeling it. And just turn it into another layer of watercolor wash. Done. All right, going back into that biggest strawberry now that it's dry, adding a little bit of pink and of course a little bit of contrast detailing on the left edge and I'm just blending, blending up into the yellow area, softening that so it's a nice even blend. Got to get more of those seeds in there, but I'm changing up my color now. I'm not using a, a burgundy or a wine color like before. I'm using a little bit of a fluorescent pink. And I'm going into this other strawberry. I'm using a little bit of an orange, like a, a dusty orange. Switch up those seed colors, friends. Switch them up. Now on the big strawberry, I'm going bold. I'm making the seeds even bigger to kind of match the scale of this big strawberry. These are definitely darker than they probably need to be, but I like the boldness of it, the graphicness of it. Some more seeds, changing it up to yellow seeds. And of course, these little baby berries need some love soon. Not before I go into this big, beautiful leaf. This is a focal point leaf, friends. It's big, beautiful shape, and I'm really getting some strong linear shapes in there. You might be wondering, gosh, Christy, how do you control that brush? I promise you, friends, this comes with time. Fill a page with leaves that have these, these lines in them, and you will start to feel more confident 
Just, just play it out, practice it out. All right, it's time to add some highlights to those seeds. I'm using gesso. Link below for all the supplies. And friends, if you are enjoying this, please give the video a boop. Give us a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you're having a good time. And also, it's a great time to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Just a little dabble, do ya, with those highlights right on top of those darker dots. I don't always put them perfectly center because nothing in nature is perfectly placed. You also don't have to add these highlights everywhere. You don't have to. If you love them, fine, do it. But just know that some of the seeds can be more low contrast, not so focal point-ish. I like to make up new words. Have you noticed that, friends? I really do focal point-ish. <laughs> All right, getting over to those baby strawberries, some really dark moments for the leaves just to let those pop a little bit. And then of course, we're going to get the seeds in on them. Friends, I am coming to what I feel like is a good end. You might be looking at this saying, well, I want to keep going with that big strawberry down in the bottom third of the page. Well, you keep going with your strawberry. You can continue on with all of these techniques, all of these ways that we've created some wonder on the page here, and you can continue on. I'm not going to, but that's okay. If you want to continue on, do it, friends. Have so much fun. This has been a blast. Aren't strawberries just so delicious to paint? Oh my gosh. I hope you try this. Head down into comments, ask all the questions. Let's start the conversation. We may not always agree. I may stress you out a little bit, but friends, I'm here. I'm here for you to make sure that you are hap, hap, happy painting. Until next time.